everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and I'm an architect in Ontario and in this video we're going to be talking about architecture portfolios. By the end of the video you're going to have six tips for your architectural portfolio. I'm also going to talk about the differences between an academic portfolio and a professional portfolio. So if you're interested, let's get started. <laughs> some context and background on my experience with portfolios itself. So I've worked on several academic portfolios because I did my undergrad at Ryerson and I also did my master's at UBC and I was briefly at Carleton University too and I've been accepted to Southern California, Florida University in the States and a few other schools as well. So I've had a bit of experience with working on portfolios. And so the tips in this video is a collection of my personal experience on working on portfolios and also my experience of what I've learned throughout the years from school, from other professors, and my mentors as well. So I collected that information into this video. And the tips I provide too is also my experience in reviewing portfolios as I was a part of the admission committee being on the other side reviewing portfolios and that really opened my perspective to a lot of new things and what to take into consideration, what are the important things to focus on and so on. So let's get started with the tips. Number one, know your audience. Now this is important before you get started on your portfolio is to understand who your audience is and what you're applying for. There are typically two types of portfolios. There's the academic portfolio and the professional portfolio. And sometimes you may have actually other types of portfolios if you're applying for a specific scholarship or a competition and you need to show some of your breadth of work. Those are all different types of portfolios. So it's important to understand who your audience is so that you can better tailor that portfolio. So for example, I recommend if you're applying for schools to do research on that particular school. Understand what the school is all about and what the program is known for so you can better tailor to that audience and to what they're specifically looking for. And the same thing goes for a professional portfolio. So if you are applying for let's say a designer role you would make sure that your portfolio emphasizes and illustrates all the characteristics and all of the skills that you have that would benefit the employer for that particular position and that would show to the employer that you are a perfect fit for that job. So you want to make sure that your portfolio isn't just a portfolio that you would use for everything, you want to make sure that it's tailored for that audience. And while you're looking into the audience, I would also collect information. Now collecting information is important because every type of school, for example, has a different set of requirements that they want for your portfolio. So for example, they may have size restrictions to the portfolio if you are submitting a hard copy. If it is digital, they would indicate that they're only accepting digital versus a hard copy. And those two versions are different. So when you're working out and planning out your portfolio, you want to keep in mind if it's a digital portfolio or if it's a hard copy, because there's going to be some choices that you'll be making that will better fit that format. So it's important to collect that information, understand how many pages, how many projects you could include in your portfolio, and so that you can better tailor to that audience and to that specific job description or program that you're applying to. So make sure to do some research and collect that information. to build a storyline. Now this is important because you don't want your portfolio to just be a collection of projects. You want it to have a storyline. You want to build a storyline starting from your cover page all the way till the end of the portfolio. You don't want it to be, and I would recommend to avoid this, to have just a collection of projects that illustrate your first year work, your second year, and in that particular order. I don't recommend that. You need to have a bit of a storyline that helps to bring the portfolio together. And what I recommend when I was putting together my portfolio, and I got this recommendation from a professor as well, and it really helped me and it changed my 
perspective of how I think about portfolios was looking at, for example, magazines. So every magazine issue, for example, would reflect a, a particular theme and a, a particular storyline. And then all the articles within that would support that theme or that particular subject of that issue of that magazine. And so all the articles and all the projects that they're featuring or interviews and so on, support that theme of that portfolio, not portfolio, but magazine. So you would wanna make sure that your portfolio has a similar storyline and thought process as well. So starting from the cover page, all the way through the portfolio. So each project that you display in your portfolio would fall under this big picture. So make sure you have that big picture and you lay out that story. So one of the things that I found really helpful when I'm laying out storyboards or presentations and I wanna have a storyline to them is I do a bit of a comic strip and I have thumbnails and I start to plan out my story and I may have you know sub stories within that big picture story. So you can start to lay it out and start to build that storyline that you want to convey with your projects. And I would also recommend to pick projects that fall under that big picture, that storyline. And most portfolios, if you are doing them from academic, there is a particular limit on the number of projects. You don't want to overload the reviewer with so many projects. You want to showcase your best projects and the ones that fit best within the storyline. So you may need to cut, most likely, cut out a lot of the projects that don't fit that big picture and that storyline that you're trying to convey. And of course, depending on the program and depending on your audience, you may wanna show more variety of the different types of projects that you do that kind of builds off of your story or if you're applying to something that's very specific and or that program has a specific item that you wanna to target toward, then you can build your portfolio around that too. So these are the type of things that I would take into consideration when you are starting to look at your portfolio and laying out the projects and your storyline. Number three, be clear and concise. Less is more in this case. Less is more, and it's important to note that we are not graphic designers. I think this is something that I've noticed a lot in a lot of portfolios that I've reviewed as well, is that we tend to overdo it with graphics. I used to do this as well, and I've learned throughout the years that that's not the way to go. And it's important to note that A, I am not a graphic designer, as much as I'd like to think I am, but I'm not. Um, so it's important to keep your graphics simple. Use one typeface, one character type in your portfolio and don't overdo it with text. You know, whoever's reviewing your portfolio, they don't have a lot of time because remember, they're reviewing maybe thousands of portfolios, hundreds for sure of portfolios at a time. So they're not gonna have time to read all the text for that particular project in your portfolio. So it's important to communicate with diagrams and drawings. And those diagrams and drawings should show that story for that particular project and build and communicate your ideas and your thoughts and that storyline that you have in that project. And of course, similar to how you lay out your portfolio overall, it has a storyline. Each project that you also illustrate in that storyline would also have a story of itself. So make sure you build a story and you have diagrams and illustrations that illustrate that and communicate those ideas. And so I wouldn't rely on text. Text is just there in case, you know, someone does want to go ahead and read it, but don't rely on text. Have the project and the images speak for itself. Thing I would do is use color sparingly. This is something I see done often is there's an overload of color and graphics. Now, I like to use my color sparingly to emphasize particular elements within the storyline or in that sequence of diagrams. I wanna specifically emphasize an action or emphasize a process that's happening. But I don't overload everything with a lot of color. And then you don't wanna overwhelm the reader when they first open your portfolio and they see so much color and it's just a lot to take in. It's hard for them to follow and they don't know where to start. So if you're using color sparingly, you're using it to specifically emphasize particular things. It's a lot easier to flow and go through your portfolio 
and it's less overwhelming as well. And then not only that, but it also makes things a lot more clear and more concise as well in your portfolio. I also recommend doing edit. Make sure you edit, edit, edit. Edit out what's unnecessary. And a lot of times I understand that that can be difficult because sometimes, and I, this has happened to me, is I'll spend a few hours working on a specific drawing that I think will communicate well the ideas of the project. But then when I lay it out, I notice that it's not quite what I wanted. It wasn't quite communicating. And sometimes it could be hard to scrap that out because you spent so much time in it. But I would recommend to really be mindful and even if you do spend time on something, but if it doesn't fit and it doesn't work, I would recommend to scrap it out because editing and how you edit it is really important. So edit out any repetitive information, edit out projects that don't specifically fit the overall storyline and edit any drawings that also don't fit within the storyline of the project as well. embrace white space. Now this was a life changing tip that I received when I was in architecture school and it's so simple yet it didn't hit me until someone actually brought it up to me and they just said why are you not embracing white space and you design white space in a way as well. And that got me thinking that's such a great point because you got to remember and this is something that came to me afterwards is that the projects and illustrations need to breathe on the page. And if you're overwhelming the pages with so much content and information and drawings, it's a really hard for the reviewer on the other side reviewing your portfolio to follow. And the drawings are not breathing. You're not really giving those drawings and the information on the page any justice as well. Because you gotta remember when you are designing those pages to also look back and see how everything flows as one spread. Because a lot of times we're so focused on those details of those particular illustrations that we're not really seeing the overall big picture. And this goes back to tip number two of how you build that storyline. So it becomes important to do the same and to make sure to design the white space of that particular page. And this was something that it sounds so simple again, and it just wasn't resonating with me until someone brought it up. And it's very important because that's what I think probably the tip that changed my portfolios the most was how to embrace that white space and how to design it as well. So when you are reviewing your page and you're designing the white space, make sure to also evaluate if all the illustrations and everything that you're showing on that page is conveying the information that you want to convey in terms of the ideas. Are they successfully communicating those ideas and concepts? And so this is important when you are looking at the overall spread and designing that white space, but embrace it. Don't overload your pages with too much information because you need to allow those drawings to breathe. So make sure to really design and take in consideration white space. Number five, show your process. This is probably the other most life-changing tip that I received when I was putting together my portfolios is to really illustrate your process. What do I mean by that? Well, you don't just want to show the end result of where you got with that particular building. So yes, you want to have a rendering, but you just don't want to have a rendering, some floor plan, some sections that basically document the building. So you don't want to just document the building. You want to illustrate your process, how you built that concept, how the building got to the way it did. So you may have illustrations illustrating that. So you want to illustrate your process. If you know, if your process was really heavy on model building, if it's very heavy on uh, sections, you know, you would show that process from how you start from zero to let's say 10. So make sure you show that process, the sequence of that process of how the building came to be. Illustrate and talk about your concept. Again, start to build that storyline for that project. Everyone loves a storyline. 
everyone. Even when you're working in the professional world, every building, when it has a storyline, it communicates and connects with people a lot more than if it didn't. So simply documenting the project is not enough. You need to look at how you can show and illustrate the project, of course, but also how you tie a story with it and how you illustrate your process as well. And this is very important, especially when you're putting together a portfolio for academics. So if you're looking to do your master's or your undergrad, this is probably the one, the most important tip that you should take into consideration. <laughs> six, be yourself. This is important. You need to be yourself and without knowing you are being yourself by making particular decisions about your portfolio. Now, what I don't recommend is to hire someone to do your portfolio. And this may sound shocking because I didn't know this was happening when I was in school, but yes, there are people that do hire people to do their portfolios. And I do not, I do not recommend you to do that. It may seem like a shortcut now because it's a lot easier to hire someone but that is not being yourself and you're selling yourself not as yourself because when someone else is doing your portfolio, they're making particular decisions for you. And if you do get accepted into the program, you're getting accepted on false pretenses because that's not truly who you are. Those weren't really the decisions and your ideas. And so what I've seen in the past is people get into the program, it's not their portfolio. Yay, yeah, it may look great. But then what happens is they're not able to keep up with the workload in school and they struggle they really struggle to get through the program because they got in on false pretenses. They got in because they weren't being themselves. And so what ends up happening is they really struggle. It's important to be yourself when you are putting together your portfolio. It's better in my eyes to be yourself. And if you don't get in, at least you were honest and transparent. That was who you are versus getting into a program with someone else's portfolio or someone else's ideas and then getting into the program and then you're not able to keep up with the work and so on. So I don't recommend that. I haven't seen anyone that has done well by going through that path. Do not take those kind of shortcuts. It is not recommended and it's not wise to do so. So those were the six tips that I would recommend if you're putting together your portfolio. I'm planning to do more videos on portfolios because this is only scratching the surface. I have a lot more insight that I wanna share with you and other principles that you should take into consideration when you are putting together your portfolio. So if that's something that's interesting to you, let me know down on the comments down below if you would like to see more on portfolios. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Video. Until then, bye!